Stay informed on earnings trends and analysis in Zach's Earnings Outlook. Well, the Q3 2019 earnings season is pretty much in the history books now. And uh, with one more recap and a look ahead to 2020 is our research director, Shiraz Mian, who's here with me. So the um, retailers were the last big names to report That's correct. for the Q3 season. You noted in a recent commentary that there's been a bit of mixed news on that front, right? That's correct. Yeah, so uh, we we list the retail as a standalone sector. We have the online players in it, the restaurants, and then the, 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 the most recent results were from the traditional retailers. Uh, and that has been, at best, a mixed picture. We have the likes of, uh, of Macy's and Kohl's, even earlier Amazon yep. uh, missed results, and then many others. Walmart and Target in particular really doing uh, very good numbers. I have this uh, chart, uh, Terry, that I uh, will, will give you a, a good sense of uh, the results. So the left-hand side is comparing the growth rate in Q3 uh, in a, uh, relative to what we had seen in, in previous quarters. Uh, the the right-hand side is the proportion of beats, so companies, retailers beating EPS and revenue estimates, the green represent EPS, uh, the orange is revenues. And as you could see, 65.6% beat EPS estimates. And you could see across the board, this is a three-year history, this is the lowest proportion of these companies beating mm. EPS estimates. Uh, and similarly, on the revenue side, uh, relative to the 12-quarter average, the 53.1% is significantly low. So uh, I said it. It was a mixed picture, but I was trying to be a little charitable. <laughs> so does this mixed news dampen hopes for a positive holiday shopping season? No, not, not at all, actually. Uh, the, the, uh, the issue with weak retail results isn't because households aren't spending or there is any question about the spending outlook or, or the economy as a whole, uh, that backdrop continues to be uh, very favorable. Uh, it's, it's a question of how these retailers have repositioned themselves. We live in a, a new environment. This is online yeah. shopping and delivery and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, traditional players uh, too wedded to the brick and mortar footprint Yep. not having a compelling enough reason uh, for, uh, uh, for, for, for consumers to spend. Uh, those are suffering. Those companies that have a good enough business uh, offering for, uh, for, for consumers, they are doing very good. And I think the, uh, the spending outlook for, for the holiday season remains good. All right, overall, what does the uh, scorecard look like, the bottom line on this uh, Q3 earnings season? So I have, I have a summary picture here, uh, Terry. Uh, I have highlighted two rows here. At the bottom is the S&P 500 for Q3. Uh, earnings for Q3 are expected to be down 1.8%. We still have a few companies to report. Sure. Uh, so it's not really the final, final number, but it'll be around about this 1.8% decline. And as you could see, 4.3% higher revenues. Margins are down about 70 basis points. Uh, and at the top, I've uh, highlighted the retail sector that you were discussing earlier, 1.2% earnings growth, 8.8% revenue growth. Margins are down in the retail sector as well. So we have seen this trend in the first three quarters of the year as well. Mm. Earnings are essentially flat to modestly down, and that's what we saw in Q3 as well. All right, forward estimates have fallen. And so while that has happened, are you expecting earnings growth for Q4? Uh, uh, no, we are not sh expecting growth. And, and you rightly point out that estimates have come down, as we are showing here in this slide, Terry. Uh, so 3.6% decline currently is expected for earnings uh, in the last quarter of the year. And what we are showing here is how this estimates trend has evolved uh, since the quarter got underway. Uh, at the beginning of the quarter, 
in early October, the expectation was for a 1.1% positive earnings growth, and it has steadily come down. As negative as it looks, Terry, mm -hmm. uh, this is in line with the trend that we have been seeing in the recent past. Uh, so the current expectation is for uh, a modest decline in, uh, uh, in Q4. Okay. Well, I always circle back to this whole easy comp issue. Uh, is all of this weakness really just setting an even lower bar for uh, easy comps for 2020? That is the story. So uh, the, the reason we had uh, this flattish, modestly down showing in 2019 was the tough comps to 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, and the performance that we are going through now sets us up for a relatively positive uh, picture next year. Uh, and you could see here, uh, it has, uh, it, it's just a big picture look. So uh, you could see the two quarters of 2018 in here at the beginning of the slide. Uh, 26.1 percent earnings growth in the third quarter of 18, 14 percent earnings growth in the last quarter, and then we are essentially flat this year. Uh, and then you could see that in the first quarter of next year, we have uh, a 4.4 percent earnings growth. So yes, your easy comps uh, variable does come into play uh, next year for us. Well, but earnings growth for 2020 has reportedly fallen to its lowest estimate in all of 2019. Uh, if that's true, are, are you still optimistic about 2020 earnings? I am. Uh, and I do have a slide that I'll share with you, Terry, uh, that shows how estimates for 2020 have come down, but they're still significantly better than what we saw in 2019. And as long as the revision trend remains within historical ranges, mm -hmm. it is reasonable for all of us to be optimistic in our outlook for earnings in the new year. Uh, and in fact, even beyond the, uh, the way I see it in current consensus estimates, uh, there is expected to be good growth in 2020. And then that accelerates into uh, 2021 as well. So numbers-wise, what are you looking for uh, as far as 2020 growth? Yeah, so, so here is the slide that I was referring to when you, when you mentioned that this is the, the lowest bin uh, in, uh, in 2019. So 8.2 percent earnings growth is expected for 2020 as a whole. Okay. And as we could see over here, it has been steadily coming down. Uh, uh, and here is what I was referring to, that the outlook remains positive. So 8.2 percent earnings growth in 2020, and then 10.2 percent earnings growth uh, in 2021. Um, um, you, you look a little skeptical, and you're probably thinking, what is Shiraz smoking? But that's <laughs> what the consensus expectations are showing. All of these worries about trade, about recession, and all of that, mm -hmm. it's just not in the numbers. The analysts expect companies to continue performing well, continue uh, earning good, good, good money, and uh, uh, that's what the market is reflecting. As long as these estimates don't come down in a major way, mm -hmm. I think we should be in good shape in the new year. All right. Well, we are going to trust on you to uh, keep us up to date on what's going on as sure. we move forward to the new year. And we thank you for all of the information here. In the meantime, you can always check out Shiraz's earnings commentaries, his written commentaries, by going to Zax.com and just accessing them right off the home page. And another reminder, for a limited time, we invite you to follow our insights, buys and sells, other recommendations from our recommendation portfolios. And you can do it in real time, and it's only going to cost you $1 for the opportunity. Um, again, for a limited time, though. You can also look into portfolios that up to now have been closed to outsiders and only accessible to subscribers. For more details, visit zax.com slash portfolio. With Shiraz, I'm Terry Ruffalo.